Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're gonna go ahead and take a look at my new tool that's hopefully gonna be over here in my new tool bag. It is the 90 degree Milwaukee M12 drill. And you're probably thinking, why do you need a drill? Now you'd be surprised. There's a variety of reasons why you might want it. We're gonna open this guy up and check it out. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. All right, guys, here we are. This is the Milwaukee 2415-20. It's a 90 degree drill. And uh, that means that it has got some special traits. All right, this is the uh, typical Milwaukee brochure. Uh, directionals, we don't need that. So this uh, 90 degree drill, it is a brush motor uh, from the looks of it. Directional switch down here. It's got a paddle activation. Paddle is a wee bit stiff. Um, what I can tell you is that this guy is a chunky monkey. Like it's a chunky girl right there, all right? Definitely, definitely a big girl, all right? It's got a speed selector right here, so you can put it on full torque. This should be a digital torque limiter. It's got a battery indicator, and uh, well, it's got a nice looking chuck. So it's got a composite plastic sleeve, and it, it, it looks like it's silky smooth, all right? Let's go ahead and take a look, see what it does with the battery. Okay, it's got a soft start feature, you can see that. And it can go to a very low RPM. Look at that, let's go ahead and slide this guy all the way over. Now this, mind you, is not, it is not a speed indicator like it would be on many rotary tools. This is a digital torque limiter. So I, if I put it over on drill, like it will go full nut until this guy smacks me in the jaw when it binds. But on, on the lowest torque setting, as soon as it reaches some sort of binding, it's going to stop what it's doing. Let's see if I can make it do it right here with this. <laughs> make one screwdriver fight the other. Let's see if I can do it. All right, ready? Oh yeah, right there. So I'm not even grabbing this that tight. Right there, it stops. So um, it does have digital torque limiting. Now it would probably rip my hand off if I if I adjusted this guy up further. That is a really cool feature. And the reason I have the screwdriver right here next to me is because this is what I'm existingly using for limited torque applications. And it's a beautiful screwdriver. It's a four volt lithium ion. This is a 12 volt system. Way more torque just off the bat. This does have a um, gearbox. It's got a planetary gear set in it, along with the the LEDs. But it, you know, four volts, you can only get so much torque out of it. Cool thing is, it's got a little bit of a range. But this guy, this is a whole new animal. You can see, I still do have some battery life left, uh, and this is a brand new battery I just opened up. So why would I get a ninety degree, three eighths inch chuck? I don't know. Um, well. It's a pretty good saying, watch this. So we got this guy right here, and let's say I put a bit like this in here. Um, yeah, you see how it kind of disappears? That is kind of a pain in the butt when it does that. Let's see, where's my other bits? This guy. So with this guy right here, you can see how far out it sticks. You see this guy here, the profile difference. Let's go ahead and take a extended bit, we'll stick it in the chuck, all the way down, flush to the rear, you can see that it's still, it's shorter than the impact itself. Now impacts are beautiful. They do their job quite well. When it comes to limiting torque, even though the new Milwaukee's do have a, a torque limiter, which I love, it still will rip your stuff up. It just will. And, and if you know your tools, you can, you can limit the, you know, the amount of damages. But this guy right here is a whole different animal. With that digital torque limiter, I can get this guy into a very close proximity area and I can zip some screws in. I can even break some stuff loose because you can use it like a wrench itself. The key is that you can get it into areas where the impact, even though this is a tiny little impact, it still does not get into some areas like this guy will. Now this guy, it is kind of heavy, all right? I'll give him that. It's a little bit heavy, uh, but 
when it comes to its capabilities, there are always times when I can get out in the field and use a drill. I use it for drilling out rivets. I put in uh, pop rivets all the time, which means I'm, I'm drilling through panels. Now I have had to drill through uh, studs in the, the field when I'm hanging stuff or whatnot. I mean, I've, I've used drills all the time. Uh, fasteners, if you go to fastener, it's all boogered up. You got to grind it flat and then uh, go ahead and drill it so that you can uh, extract it. Well, that's why you need a drill in the field. And uh, this guy here, it's a long slender profile and it's going to fit in a tool bag standing straight up and it's going to take minimal amount of space compared to a drill that's going to be, you know, yay long. That's going to take a lot of real estate inside a tool bag. This guy is actually cheaper than the, the Milwaukee uh, M12 drills, just is. And I think it's got more functionality. Since I'm usually gonna be using it for putting in fasteners with extremely limited torque, I think it's gonna work out just fine. Got a couple rubber bumpers up here on the head. It's got a metal head. Man, that chuck, it, it feels pretty good. The only thing I've noticed that I might not like, notice one of my LEDs is lighting up and the other one's not. This unit is probably defective from the looks of it. But, uh, Anyway, it just is what it is. I might keep it regardless of that other LED being boogered up. I'd love to tear it apart and see the planetary reduction because this guy is really spinning a thing in there. You see, you can get it really slinging, but at the same time, look how slow the slow RPM feature is. Now with a brushed motor, it's actually a little bit difficult to get that kind of range. And I can hear the SCRs in there, I can hear it with doing the pulse width for the motor. You can, you can hear it. And uh, that's why it's got such good range is because of the digital circuitry, which is also backed up by uh, this digital torque limiter. Good little drill. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how it's gonna fit in my tool bag right now. All right guys, here's the brand new tool bag that I got. I've got my, Milwaukee M12, let's go ahead and put the bit back in it because I love keeping it with that extended Phillips. And that kind of fits over here off to the side, kind of up against the uh, zip ties. And then I've got this drill here, which I'm thinking, I'm gonna put both these guys right in the middle, like so. And then this guy is just gonna live right here in the opposite side pocket. Now I have two batteries in my pack, so if one of my batteries dies, I can pop the battery off the other tool and I am not down and out in the field. Very cool. The drill is compatible with obviously all types of bits because it's a regular chuck. Also, uh, if I really wanted to, I got a 90 degree that I could also utilize with either one of my tools, but nonetheless, having a drill with digital limited torque is gonna be a huge plus. Now I've got um, my drill bits, which I can just kind of slap right in there doesn't really matter. And these guys up here, I think I might suspend these up here. These are just extra bits. You can see I have a chamfer bit. If you're gonna be drilling, you should always have a chamfer. Got an extension, some longer bits. I've got uh, Allens, I've got some Torx. I mean, Phillips, all different types of Phillips because you never know. They fit up in there, zip it up. And my tool bag is ready to go. Very cool, added some extra capabilities and technically I'm not really limited any more than I was because I have this, the real estate inside my bag. I can afford to do that, so why not? That's the way I see about it. The only time I have to lift this is when it goes in and out of my truck and I'm pretty sure I could deal with that. Um, every other place I'm gonna be going, I'm gonna be going up or down stairs. That's why I've got the roller handle on this pack. And I got the stair guides on the back so I can slide it up and down stairs. Not a problem at all. But for the most part, the bag is pretty much complete. There might be one or two other small uh, tools that I might think about that I might need. But for the most part, that's it. That's the, I think that's gonna wrap up my Tech LCT Wheeler bag, my brand new Milwaukee 90 degree drill. Okay guys, there you have it. That's the 90 degree Milwaukee drill on the M12 platform. It seems to be an absolute treat. It fits my bag much better than a regular gun style uh, drill. And uh, I think it's going to suit me quite nicely. 
We'll see how long I keep it in my bag, if I keep it there, but I'm pretty sure that all the instances I needed a drill, I was sitting there just extremely upset that I didn't have one. And if all I'm doing is grabbing my one tool bag and going and handling some of these very complex service calls, then um, it's best to have one on me. I mean, for the weight, I'm not gonna feel it. It's a wheeler bag and you know, I'm just gonna feel the weight when I take it in and out of the truck which is minimal. It's a truck. You know, I just slide it out and I just throw it back up in there when I'm done. You know, it's, it's really not that much of a burden compared to the capabilities that it brings to the table. Anyway, guys, hope you like this video. If you do, go ahead and please like down below. Milwaukee, I'll go ahead and uh, leave a link for the Amazon store where you can find one. I think it's a cool drill. It's cheaper than the regular guns style drill. And uh, if anything, We'll see. Uh, we'll see how it does in the field. See you guys.